Here is an ordinary torque converter off an early 90s Toyota, automatic. That's the side that bolts to the flywheel. It's made out of two halves welded together. There's the weld. That's the side that's being driven by the transmission. And that's the output side that goes into the bell housing on the automatic transmission input. This collar here drives the oil pump which sucks up the oil from the pan of the transmission and fills your torque converter every time your motor is started and running. Every time you shut your key off, half of the oil runs out of the torque converter, goes back into the oil pan of your transmission, and that's why when the car is running, the level is lower on your transmission dipstick because this is full. When the car is off, this is half empty, so a couple of liters runs back in your pan and raises your level. That's why you always have to check automatic transmission fluid levels while the vehicle's running. These things can be rebuilt, and the way they do it is they mount the whole unit on a lathe, spin it around, and use a cutting tool and cut this weld. Then, of course, they have to re-weld it afterwards. So, let's cut it open, since I don't have a lathe, with a cutting wheel on a grinder, and see what's inside so I can tell you how it works. That unit is called a torque converter because when you're revving your engine and trying to accelerate and the thing's not turning on your wheels you know there's no output power because you've got your brakes on or something like that then instead of having all that energy being lost from the engine turned into nothing it's actually building up torque on the torque converter and trying to turn your wheels that's called static torque on a vehicle with a friction clutch like a manual transmission car or standard car when the clutch is slipping you're heating up the flywheel and actually losing torque, static torque, when nothing can move. You never have 100% torque coming out from the input to the output until the clutch is fully engaged and not slipping. On an automatic car, when you're accelerating and revving the engine higher and higher, even though the output isn't turning or it's turning slowly, torque is being built up in there and trying to break the wheels free or get you to move. So energy isn't wasted, but some heat is created and there is actually some energy lost. Now most torque converters in almost every vehicle work the same. The difference is there's lock-up torque converters which have a clutch inside so when the thing gets spinning at the right speed and the input and output when you're driving along are almost the same speed and your vehicle's traveling at usually more than 45 kilometers an hour, a clutch grips together. It's controlled electronically but it works hydraulically and that causes the input and output to spin at the same speed. Normally when you're driving along in an automatic car, the torque converter is always around 10% inefficient. So there's 10% less RPMs coming out the back end that are being driven by the flywheel. That always is creating a little bit of heat and that's why automatic trans transmission cars have a transmission cooler. Automatic transmission cars that have the lock-up torque converter, which most modern vehicles do, get about the same fuel economy on the highway as a standard car, but not in the city. Well, you know, this is Canada. It's the second coldest country in the world after Russia. It's minus 15 Celsius outside right now on March 2nd. It may look like a sunny day, but it's damn cold. I just got done chopping that thing up, and the reason I'm working outside is because it's messy with grinder dust and oil, and because I got good lighting outside. So let's see what's inside. Looks like a grapefruit almost. At least or an orange or a grapefruit when you cut one in half. A lot of people keep complaining to me with messages and comments that I'm not making enough car videos or that enough car videos with cars moving in in action. Well, because this is such a cold place, and Canada had the snowiest, coldest winter in 40 years. Well, we even got winter six weeks early. It started in the beginning of November, and it usually just doesn't even start till after Christmas when we get lasting snow. So if I was a snowmobile producing video guy, you know, would I be producing the best snowmobile videos on the hottest days of the summer? No. I produce car videos, but when they're all buried in snow, and it's so damn cold out my camera only functions for five minutes before the tape screws up, it's really hard to make videos in the winter time. So I'm not doing that bad of job considering where I live, the conditions I got to live under, and the fact that even my kitties can't handle it. So there's all the parts of your torque converter.
This, this first one is the side that goes into your transmission. This part sits in there. There's the side that gets driven by your flywheel. And a little oil. And there's the other side, which looks exactly the same as that side. And on the back is a clutch plate and disc. So this one has the lock-up torque converter to give it better efficiency when it's driving at normal speeds on the open road. So how it works is it's really just a centrifugal pump. Looks like a vacuum cleaner inside. Oil is pumped in through the main hole in the middle from the valley of the oil pan of the transmission. And it keeps getting thrown into the middle until the torque converter is completely filled. And the oil that's in these veins, when it's spinning, centrifugal force throws it out. But it throws it out in a way that it wants to come out like this on an angle. Well, when it comes out like that on an angle, it hits these opposite veins, which have a greater curve on them, and it induces this thing to want to spin at the same speed as that. Every action has an opposite and equal reaction, and that's what drive your, drives your car. So all the time the engine is running and your foot's on the brake, and your car's not moving, this thing's throwing oil at not that great of speed, so the oil is sort of getting all chopped in half, and not actually pushing this thing around, but it is applying force against it. As this thing picks up velocity, the oil is getting thrown out with great more centrifugal force, and it starts to flow in a pattern like this, completely in circular pattern, through those veins in the middle, and creates a vortex all the way around. Well, that causes this thing to start to work a lot more efficiently, and they pretty close to and they end up spinning pretty close to the same speed, input as output. Of course, there's friction between the oil flying around with all those moving parts, and that's what's creating the heat in your transmission. So a torque converter is basically just a hydraulic clutch. So it's kind of easy to understand, I guess. Now, when this godforsaken country gets a little warmer outside, I'll take apart an automatic transmission, the complete body of one, and show you how all the gears and bands and clutches and planetary gears and all that stuff works. But right now, I don't want to take apart one on my kitchen table. It's just too messy. Now, as you can see, I had a bit of mess there just cutting this sucker open. So just wait. Be patient. It's not till April or May in this country before it's warm enough to work outside. And my hands are freezing. <laughs> 